Hi everyone, I'm Doc Ken and welcome to Science, Technology and Society Chapter 7 entitled Climate Change and Sustainable Development. So what are the learning outcomes for this chapter? One is to demonstrate competence on the various impacts of climate change. Two, identify and distinguish the causes of climate change. And three, understand the effects of climate change on the society. The climate has been changing. The Mother Earth needs an antidote. How severe is this problem? Is this global? Just in the last 650,000 years, it shows that there has been seven cycle of glacial shrinking. Glaciers have been melting so fast. With the uncontrolled greenhouse gases being pumped into the atmosphere, climate change shows significant impact on Earth's temperature, sea level, biodiversity, and weather. First, let's talk about climate change and global warming. When we talk about global warming, it refers to the long-term warming of the planet. Global warming is expected to have far-reaching, long-lasting, and in many cases devastating consequences for planet Earth. Climate change encompasses global warming but refers to the broader range of changes that are happening to our planet. Uh, this includes rising sea levels, shrinking mountain glaciers, accelerating ice melt in Greenland and Antarctica, and shifts in flower and plant blooming times. These are all consequences of the warming, which is caused mainly by people burning fossil fuels and putting out heat-trapping gases into the air. In summary, global warming refers to the increase on Earth's average temperature, while climate change includes global warming and changes in precipitation. Let's now move on to the common effects of global warming. Just remember the acronym REACH. R stands for rising sea level. I stands for increase in temperature. C stands for changes in water supply. And H stands for habitat damage and species affected. First is rising sea level. Sea level can rise by two different mechanisms with respect to global warming. First, as the ocean warms due to an increased global temperature, seawater expands, taking up more space in the ocean basin and causing a rise in water level. The second mechanism is the melting of ice over land, which then adds water to the ocean. As you can see on the figure, it shows that the comparison of glaciers between 1994 and 2004 in Alaska. Next, increase in temperature. One of the most immediate and obvious effects of global warming is the increase in temperature around the world. The gradual heating of Earth's surface, oceans, and atmosphere is caused by human activity, primarily the burning of fossil fuels that pump carbon dioxide, methane, and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. As you can see on the figure, it shows the effect of increase on Earth's average temperature. Third, changes in water supply. By changing air temperatures and circulation patterns, global warming also changes where precipitation falls. Water in its various forms is always on the move in a complex process known as water cycle. Global warming is already having a measurable effect on this cycle, altering the amount, distribution, timing, and the quality of available water. As it gets warmer, the amount of evaporation is expected. Thus, the higher amount of precipitation is expected. As you can see on the figure, the Angat Dam, Philippines water level drops further. And lastly, habitat damage and species affected. Global warming also contributes to the habitat damage, thereby reducing organism population and loss of diversity. The effects of global warming on Earth's ecosystem are expected to be profound and widespread. Many species of plants and animals are already moving their range northward or to the higher altitude as a result of warming temperatures. The figure illustrates a polar bear standing on an iceberg near Manitoba, Canada, so the loss of 
sea ice sheets, which is the greatest threat to polar bears' habitat. How global warming works. The sun's energy passes through Earth's atmosphere. This energy is trapped inside the Earth's atmosphere and cannot rebound back to the outer space. Greenhouse gases increase the temperature of the planet by not allowing the heat to escape through it. When the temperature starts to change rapidly, it becomes more concerning. The Earth is wrapped by the layer of the heat-trapping gases. Whenever these gases enter the atmosphere, it acts similar to a blanket which traps heat into the atmosphere and then alters climatic condition globally. Next, let's talk about greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gas is a gas that contributes to the greenhouse effect by absorbing infrared radiations. Examples are carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs. First, carbon dioxide. Greenhouse gases enter into the atmosphere as a result of a lot of human activities which include burning of fossil fuels and wood products. Carbon dioxide is a colorless gas that gets released during combustion of organic matter. Today, human and industrial activities are pumping in huge amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. More carbon dioxide in the atmosphere means more energy absorption which results in increase in Earth's temperature. Carbon dioxide is the principal contributor of climate change because of its common emission. Next, nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is another greenhouse gas released during industrial and agricultural activities. Nitrous oxide is released in large quantities due to the use of nitrogen fertilizer on the crops. It is not released in large quantities by humans as carbon dioxide, but nitrous oxide absorbs much more energy than carbon dioxide. Therefore, it is required to curb the emission of nitrous oxide as well. This greenhouse gas is also known as lapping gas, commonly emitted from bacteria soil. This gas is usually used as oxidizer in rocketry and in motor racing to increase the power of the engines. Third is methane. Methane is a combustible gas that gets released by extracting it from coal, the composition of garbage in landfills or plant matters, or form the bacteria in rice paddies. It is used as main component in natural gas. Like carbon dioxide, it also absorbs heat and prevents it to release back into the atmosphere. Methane can absorb as much as 25 times more heat than carbon dioxide. And lastly, CFCs. Chlorofluorocarbons cause significantly stratospheric ozone depletion and global warming relating to greenhouse effect. CFCs under commercial use as refrigerants and blowing agents. These greenhouse gases are being transported to the second layer of the atmosphere which refers to the stratosphere because there's no removal of gases in the troposphere which is the lowest layer of the atmosphere. These greenhouse gases are being broken down on the stratosphere, releasing chlorine atoms that causes ozone depletion. One of the sustainable development goals of United Nations is to combat climate change. Climate action is UN Sustainable Development Goals number 13. As you can see, what are being done today to combat climate change? We have been using the following such as the use of biofuels, a fuel derived directly from living matter, vehicle efficiency such as the use of e-transportation, windmill, solar power plant, electric efficiency such as LED bulbs and compact fluorescent light bulbs and the more. These are the simple ways you can do to fight climate change such as plant a tree, recycle, turn up unnecessary light and appliances, and others.